Tonight, we talk about sex. Sex and the rules. What are the rules? And in America, are the rules dumb? In Japan and Europe, companies run steamy ads like these without any fuss. But not in America. America is a little more squeamish about sex than many other countries. It's why, not far from my office, sex shops like this one hide most of their wares inside, away from public view. No one is safe, and we really have to protect our kids. Also, to protect children, America passed Megan's Law. Megan's Law will protect tens of millions of families from the dread of what they do not know. But the lawmakers didn't know that one result of Megan's Law would be that when these high school students had sex, a state would call it rape and put the boy on a sex offender registry along with real rapists. He's branded for life. Why is that fair? Also, if you're gay, you can serve in the American military, as long as you don't tell anyone you're gay. Is that right? Lady Gaga says no. Are you listening? And what about porn? It's all over the internet, and yet this man faced jail time for making these videos. Why? So, tonight, sex. What are the rules? And what should they be? And now, the man who shatters conventional wisdom, John Stossel. So first tonight, what are the rules when it comes to kids? I'm talking about teenagers mostly, but speaking of kids, if you have young kids in the room, you may not watch, want them to watch parts of tonight's show since we will deal with adult subjects. Though if you have teenagers, keep them around because what they don't know could wreck their lives. And what they don't know, most of us don't know, and that is that if you and your high school sweetheart are 17 and you have sex, and by the way, about half of America's 17-year-olds have had sex, you could be prosecuted for a sex crime. Today, young love is sometimes a sex crime. It was for this couple. Frank and Nikki met in high school in Texas. He was a 19-year-old senior. She was a 15-year-old freshman. Here they are at the prom. Nikki's mother knew she'd been having sex. She bought Nikki birth control pills. But one night, Nikki fought with her mom. And her mom was angry enough to call the police. The cops charged Frank with sexual assault. What happened next is hard to believe. In fact, it's so hard to believe you wouldn't believe it if I told you. So I will let Frank and Nikki tell their story. Nikki, your mom felt so bad about getting angry and calling the cops, she tried to undo that. Yes, she did. But the police said no. No. They said the charges were filed and the state took over and they had to prosecute him. So what happened next? They offered you a deal. Well, first they said, we're going to put you in jail for a long time. For a long time. They said if uh, I didn't plead guilty, you know, I would do time. So, of course, I didn't want to do time. So you pled guilty. You thought maybe it would then go away. Yes. Well, they told me it was deferred adjudication. Within seven years, it would be off my record and uh, be like nothing happened. But uh, apparently... It didn't happen. You were charged with sexual assault of a child. So, Nikki, you were the child. Were you sexually assaulted? No, I was not. Oh, the sex was consensual? It was consensual. Did you know at the time it was against the law? I'd heard the term jailbait, you know. I knew it would... I didn't realize that he could go to jail and... You were get a freshman in high trouble. school? Yes. I was... Dating a senior, a lot of my friends were dating seniors. A lot of my friends were having sex with their senior boyfriends. And nothing happened to them? No. But what happened to him? Um, he's now a registered sex offender for life. First, he, he, you were put on probation, which meant what? Couldn't uh, go to public events where there was anyone under the age of 17. Football games, basketball games. So you couldn't go to your own high school. You couldn't go to your brother's football game. And you couldn't see Nikki. No. They told me, if you know, to stay away from her. Well, of course, anybody under the age of 17, and she wasn't 17 yet. So, Nikki, when you turned 17, what happened? Um, I left home, and we moved in together. 
that day. Mm -hmm. And I turned 17. And now you're married. You got married. Four kids. Been married for many years. Four kids. Almost 11 years. So everything's good. Happy ending. Mm -hmm. Except. Well, except, <laughs> except what? He's a registered sex offender. It affects us every day. Years from now, people are going to go to that registry, and they're going to see him 60 years old, victim's age 15. Yeah, the, I have the registry here. It, it makes you look really creepy because it says, I mean, it has your age on this, and sexual assault of a child, victim age 15. You sound like a pedophile. Yeah, I do. What's this done to your life? I guess it kind of, in a way, took my life, I think, you know, because it's something I think about all the time. And am I in the wrong place at the wrong time? You know, that's all it takes is one mistake, and, you know, that'll be it. Have you tried to get off the registry and say, look, I don't belong there with real rapists and child molesters? I've tried a few times, but they said I would be wasting money to try it in Texas, you know. The law is fun, the law. Like I said, I understand. I have four little girls. And, you know, I've checked the registry before. But, you know, like I, I think each case should be trialed on a case by case. So laws like this that punish people like you for consensual sex seem really wrong to me, but let's meet someone who says these are good laws. Wendy Murphy was once a sex crimes prosecutor. She used to lock people up for doing what I hope were real sex crimes. Now she teaches a course about sexual violence at New England Law School. So how can this be a good law? Well, let me first say that uh, these guys are not only an exception, but an exceedingly rare exception. And um, you don't structure whole legal systems and rules around the exception. You, the purpose of these laws is to protect children as a class. You have to draw the line somewhere. Um, good for kids, the line is 16, 17, in some states, 18. And, you know, as we've evolved as a society, uh, the more we've respected children, the higher that age has gone up because... Um, and why That's is that good for kids? Because it's good to have civilized rules around children's vulnerabilities in society. Um, we know that children's brains aren't even done developing by age 16, so we certainly shouldn't be cavalier about them having sex. Now, having said that, um, most prosecutors don't go after these kinds of cases. I was one. I've heard of these cases. I've had those parents call me. I said, get out of here. This problem is not because of registries. It's that he never should have been prosecuted. There will always be prosecutors who want to make a name for themselves by having more convictions. There will always be power-mad jerks. That's right. And the remedy is political. You don't like your prosecutor? Advocate for that person to be impeached or to vote for a better prosecutor. That's your remedy. We do have bad prosecutors in this country. But uh, I don't get why you the say the law is good. Given the CDA, given the CDC statistics and how many kids have sex, you want to raise the age of consent to 18. So you would make half the half the teenagers lawbreakers. No, not necessarily. You know, my, my mother had her first child at 16, and she had a wonderful family. She and my father had five children. They had a, you know, they did a great job. Um, that no. would be illegal under your rule? Y you know, in, yes, I think my, my father Why is been that good? It's, it's not that it's good. It's that children don't always make good decisions. And the law helps? Kids Those don't even don't... know what the law is. That's part of the point. I mean, you say, well, 50% of teenagers are having sex, so why don't we just raise the age? Lots of boys who are 17 and 18 years old are drinking underage and driving fast. We don't just say, eh, a boy, go get him. We say, oh, that's not good for children. How can we, you know, stop that? We don't want them drinking underage. We don't want them driving fast. You don't indulge children's impulsive, immature decision-making. But the we let six Teen-year-olds drive, but let me ask but not Frank, drink. Nikki, what do you think about her argument that this protects <clears throat> kids? Oh, well. <laughs> it happens a lot. It happens a whole lot. Um, you have four kids. Is this going to protect them? I would never put somebody through what we've had to go through. I thank you both for joining us.